Larson, I, I, I spoke this morning, so you probably know from the Jupiter Association, and I'm kind of standing in for the man that's on the, on the big screen at the moment, Alex, uh, Sorry. who, I've already pressed it, oh, yeah. uh, who's from Acquia, who was going to host a panel of people uh, to talk about open source and sustainability. Open source is one, but what does that mean? Um, but as you can see, Alex is at home along with a few other people who were also at home uh, because travelling was becoming difficult. So I'm stepping into the host role. Alex is now on the panel. We have some other panel members. And then we're going to start talking about that open source thing. So what I'm going to do first of all is ask the people on the panel to introduce themselves, talk about who they are, uh, what relationship they have to open source, and generally, tell us what they feel, where they feel open source is in 2020, or at least where they thought it was last week. So I'm going to start and ask that question to Baddy. Hi. Okay, I was Zach. I'm Baddy. Uh, we're currently living in Germany. So I'm sitting there right now, but I come originally from Iceland. And I started in Drupal in 2007. I started uh, to contribute to Drupal in 2015. So it took me probably eight years to figure out to contribute, how to contribute to open source. And I run a company called One X Internet, and we are always here, like have been in the last years contributing to Drupal and to open source in general. So I think open source is just a great place today, and especially in the moments like we have today. Then uh, we all know from previous um, times that open source wins, certainly. When there is recession, recession and things are going, you know, um, in a direction where people have to hold money um, and be careful how they spend it, then we are certainly, you know, seeing open source grow. So I think the future is bright for open source, if you think about it. Thank you. Uh, can we move on to Alex himself? Ah, yes. So, first of all, Richard, thanks a lot for uh, letting me treat you, <laughs> please. Because, yeah, the idea was being all of us on the, on the room there. But, uh, yeah, circumstances had changed and I wasn't feeling comfortable to uh, force everyone to travel to the, to the conference, right? So, thanks a lot to, to be there and please be safe. Uh, so, I'm Alex Moreno. I work for, for Akia, I've been uh, working throughout years and a half in this company, and some of you know because it's a global company. I've been technical architect for five years, so I'm an engineer for 15, I've been in Drupal 12.833 years, which is 12 years of demos, uh, that says the uh, Drupal profile. And in open source, I've been like 20 years, I started doing Linux practice and things like that in my university and I was amazed of the power of, the, of this thing, right? Suddenly someone has an idea and we are able to share this uh, literally recording in the world, right? Um, but and we will go into the day into this, this round day, I think that changed, that has changed a lot for the good, but at the same time um, I share the optimism of body, but I think we have to be careful because there are some uh, dangers. There are some things that we, we should be careful, right? In terms of, uh, uh, yeah, it's very successful, but projects die because 
because of that. And that's why we, I, I kind of try to open the, um, the idea of having this, this on paper. Okay, that's great. Uh, can I move on to Ariel? Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm sad that I can't see you all um, in the room there. Uh, I'm actually not too far. I'm over in uh, southwest of Bristol. Welcome to my, my kitchen that I work, work from. Um, so, <laughs> have a look at all the lovely fridge magnets of the places that I've been. Um, so, I am relatively new to open source. Uh, I have been, a, I'm first, I'm a designer, so I'm not a, a person who codes typically, though I have been in the past. But I'm a designer, I've been a designer for like 10 years now, and I recently, um, three years ago, started to learn about open source through connections with my dev teams that I was working with. And then working at an open source humanitarian nonprofit tech company that was based out of Kenya called Ushahidi, and they made open source tools for human rights um, cases. So things like crisis response and street harassment in different countries and um, election monitoring in uh, places where democracy is, well, most places have problems with democracy at the moment. So, um, yeah, uh, we're on humanitarian <laughs> open source tech tools. And um, I also am part of an organization, a volunteer organization called Open Source Design that's been going for about five or six years. And this is like a group of designers interested in open sourcing in whichever way, shape or form. So I'm coming at open source from a kind of slightly different angle in the sense that I'm a traditionally not well represented function um, design within open source and also the humanitarian aspect, which when you are creating open source stuff, and your also non-profit sustainability of your organization is incredibly difficult. So while I'm hugely optimistic that we're moving in the right direction, and I believe 100% in the ethos of open source and openness in general, I still think that there's a lot of work that we can do to make it more inclusive and accessible, and yeah. Okay, okay. well, thank you very much. So could we move into the room now and speak oh. with Jen? <laughs> So I'm Jen Ashley. Um, most of the work I do nowadays is uh, on diversity and inclusion uh, with a specific focus on women in tech. Uh, I'm retired. I retired already. Had a corporate career, uh, ran my own companies, uh, and then decided on my second retirement that I'll just focus on uh, on the tech scene in London. And I was initially running a lot of you know uh, tech meetups, which are focused on the general you know the general uh, profile, which is. A highly male dominated, but then uh, after a few years, I said I should just refocus my time, passion, and energy into getting more women in tech. Brilliant, yes. thank you. And the last of our panelists, Gabo. Hey, uh, I'm Gabo Roichi. I also work at Arquia. Uh, I have been doing open source for more than 20 years. Uh, actually, I started in open content when I was in high school, and we were uh, writing uh, in Hungarian on how to build websites. That's why I got into Google. Wow, I did And know. the reason I had I had the possibility to do that as when looking back after more than 20 years is because I had this middle class wide privilege that I had. That my parents were providing me with uh, with enough uh, with enough support that I could spend my time on on doing these interesting things and learning and joining communities and and building stuff instead of uh, I don't know, being at the grocery store and filling shelves. So, um, so I, so I became increasingly aware of this privilege that I have. Um, that's a thing that that, that I that I noticed um, in the in the open source communities is that we are that we are um, we are primarily loaded with people that have some kind of this these privileges, and we have a hard time to figure out how to. How to get people who don't have those privileges to um, to get involved, um, and in terms of uh, whether open source won, there's a very interesting example. The a very current example is the Hungarian government set up a website for tracking coronavirus news and cases, and it's been built on Drupal. So <laughs> uh, the Hungarian Drupal community is all over the case of trying to figure out which models they use and how they. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, interesting. Um, so yeah, in, in one, yeah. Thank you, Gabba, uh, and thank you for the whole panel for taking your time to do this and from your 
from your homes off. I think there's some home offices I've never seen there before either, so that's kind of cool. Okay, so for the audience's benefit and to remind our panel as well, the way that we're going to work this is I've got a couple of questions here. Um, so I'll read out the question. Um, I have a primary person on our panel that I want to forward that question to. I'll also ask the other panellists that if they wish to add some further comment to whatever the primary speaker is, then just kind of please raise your hand and join into a conversation between you. I'm also going to watch the audience here and I've asked the audience if they've got any comments they wish to add. If you can please raise your hand, um, I shall try and uh, help get your comment into the conversation. What I'll have to do for the benefit of the tape, uh, the tape, how old am I? Um, <laughs> So, for the benefit of the recording, um, I shall probably repeat the question so that it gets heard, if that's okay, and then we'll take it from there. So, ah, first question then. Um, and especially because Alex actually originally raised this uh, panel for Drupal Camp London, uh, I'd like to ask Alex, what does Open Source Has Won mean to you? Alex. Yeah, let me open with first of my uh, co work. <laughs> so cute. The name is uh, it's Trufa. Very good. The word I'm asking for the name is uh, Trap in Spanish. Sorry, um, I don't want to digress. Um, so, why it has won us? So, we think like 20 years ago, without talking too much about my age, um, when we started on the years, I was talking about the uh, numbers parties, organizing things for university. We were trying to introduce um, this thing called open source, right? And no one knows, no one knew at that point what was this about. And uh, people were looking like, uh, you are kind of hippie, or you know, we are at university, we are working on Java, on these kind of cool technologies that they are going to be on on the enterprise. Um, what is this open source, right? You are giving it for free. You know, we have moved from that conversation uh, to nowadays, everyone using it. And if you don't think you are using it because you are Windows, uh, you are totally wrong because just connecting to the internet, you are using protocols that are based on open source. Right? That's amazing. That means that, yeah, we have one. But at the same time, this is putting a lot of pressure on the ecosystem, as I was saying before. Right? And we see companies like Microsoft, Facebook, uh, Amazon, they are opening a lot of uh, open source projects and they are sharing uh, their code. But what I think is, if is that really a contribution that is helping the community? Is that enough? Um, or is it just peanuts, if you, if you see what I mean, right? Okay. Is there any more hands there? I didn't see any. Anyone got anything to say? Add on to that? No, but I agree with, uh, I actually want to take this example of Microsoft. You know, I think it is now two years or something like that where they decided to start open sourcing a lot of their tools, including their .NET framework, their uh, Visual Studio code, and of course buying GitHub. And for for me, that was like you know that was the open source as one. You know, having that giant uh, that was actually on the opposite, taking that step with the new CEO. So I think that's great, uh, a great example of just the saying exactly what you were saying, and it's just you know we are already there. So that was. That's my best example for, for it. Okay, well thank you. Any comments from the audience on the concept of open source has one? Because I've realised I can't see both the screen and the audience at the same time. Okay, so, um, Finn. Yeah, I mean I just think that working in the public sector, maybe 10 years ago, you know, even five years ago, we wouldn't have seen the acceptance of open source in you know, being even specified in procurement um, uh, you know, activities where they say they specifically want open source. Oh, uh, so the GDS in the UK, you know, I think that's just has demonstrates. Yeah, so what Finn is saying, in front of, I don't know if you can hear me, and maybe you can tell us this if you can hear Finn, uh, but what Finn is saying is particularly in the open, in the public sector, 
Um, even five years ago, you would never have heard open source mentioned or being considered very much, except in some quite radical kind of open source uh, public sector areas. But now it's the default, is what you're saying. Getting that. Getting that. Yeah. Okay, that's really cool. Okay, so well, let's move on a little bit. So we have all these people using open source and almost it becoming a default in many areas. Um, I think what I'd like to move on to is the second question here and is, well, is this current situation, is it actually sustainable? Do we have enough makers to balance our takers, the people who are using open source and the people who contribute? Gabba, can you open that one for us? I don't think we have enough. Uh, so, um, when, when can you have enough? So, I think there's a, there was a very, very high visibility issue with the OpenSSL software, the Heartbleed bug, that was causing massive disruptions uh, on the internet everywhere. And that's what exposed the OpenSSL project to having very few maintainers and relying on very few dedicated people to keep the software alive. And when that happens, a lot of companies sign up and, and pledge support. But it, but it happened on a on a on more of a crisis basis, right? So there's some crisis happened and it exposed the problem, and then it became better. Um, and there's been some of those crises with Drupal as well in the past when our servers melted down and then we put up a web page on Drupal.org that we can serve anything here because our servers melted down and the companies came together and funded the new servers and that, that's where the Drupal Association started. Um, so there's been um, cases like this um, that expose that we need more people involved. And I think we also need to take better care of the contributors that are involved with our, uh, with our software. So one of the things that we need to do better is to is to um, accept and even celebrate when people go and take time off to, to go work on something else. We need to foster a culture where where there is not an expectation of constantly working and all the tickets come in and we sold me everything even though some people have a, have a their desire for perfectness um, to do that. So, um, in one sense, we need to acknowledge the this, this scope of work and the number of people that we have. We need to celebrate people going off. We need to be very proactive with getting more people involved to, to have fresh, fresh eyes and fresh energy on the software that we're working on in the communities. Yeah, that's a good point, Gaur. Um, especially when you talk about the maintainers, right? I think there is a lot of pressure in them. Right? Like, um, I'm just thinking on one Jeff Perry that you probably know. Mm. I discovered that he's, he's working on 200 projects for free. <laughs> he's mm. having his work. And on top of that, he's maintaining 200 uh, projects. I mean, Jeff is a uh, superhuman. I'm overwhelmed with five, right? Um, but I don't think that's sustainable for even for superhumans like, like Jeff, right? Uh, sorry, I just have to come in on this because. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, Jen, as well, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, uh, but like, it really doesn't surprise me that you use the term, like, man, that, that it's a person that's contributing oh, to that sorry. many ages. No, but it doesn't surprise me that it's a man, because uh, one of the things that I have, one of the things that I think about in open source and contribution a lot is how overwhelmingly um, the representation is of typically men, people that identify as male, and how that correlates to me with the research and the work that I've done around people that are pr primarily the carers within households and that do, you know, a lot of the, you know, those are typically women or the not men, um, that do the caring and do the maintenance of the household. And I used to talk to my male developer colleagues about this, like, well, you're contributing to open source on the computer at night, who's, you know, doing this, that, and the other to do with the household. And they're like, oh yeah, my wife. And it's like, oh, isn't that nice? Um, <laughs> for you. So, uh, yeah, it gets a bit painful that this is celebrated as well, like the, the, the fact that they, these people have, you know, the ability or the 
it's not the ability, they're, they're, yeah, the privilege to be able to do that is largely because of somebody's lack of privilege to be able to do that. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And I think that uh, where we need to get to, if we are going to answer the questions about, like, do we need more makers? I think we, we have to do that through the organizations. And that's where we have to do it. Because I remember the time when uh, Gabor and I and uh, a couple of more people, we were doing Drupal Europe. And of course, like, you know, the best thing that happened there was that we had a lot of companies that were supporting us. But at the same time, we were also spending a lot of time away from our friends and family while doing it. So there was somebody that actually lost, you know, and it was either our, our you know, colleagues at work or it was our family or friends, you know, somebody was actually allowing us or we were just taking that and doing it. You know, I said that I was lucky because I have a really good husband and have, you know, I have also kids. So I'm really happy, like lucky to have a person that so, you know, it supports me in that, but not everybody does. But the key here is also to have organizations to actually support. Because we should be able to do this while we work. And I think that's the challenge. So how can we get the organizations to accept contribution as being part of their growth? Because then we can actually still stop at five and go and spend time with the family, right? Do you, do you think, Badi, there is a, a combination there of um, being an organisation who both contributes time, but also contributes, I'm, I'm quoting uh, a previous executive director of mine, con uh, contributes treasure uh, to somebody else who can contribute time. So, for example, things like the Drupal Association, you know, I mean, sponsoring that is a, is a contribution in a sort of abstracted way. Yeah, there are these many ways of, of contribution. And one of them is financial contribution. And then we have, of course, uh, uh, the contribution in the code. And we have the documentation. We have the event organizing. So there are so many things that are a contribution. And, and I'm so happy to be actually part of the Drupal community because we have already realize that there is more than only code as a contribution. So we've figured that out a couple of years ago. And therefore, our community is also growing. But the challenge is that um, a company needs to see a value to put their people on a contribution. And if I think about it from our company, we are 40 people. So every work, like every code we write or every design we do, we get that paid. So I need to figure out how can I get the contribution. If I put the person on, like, if I put the designer on the design project, how can I get that back so I can actually pay the salary at the end of the day? So do we maybe need to take our makers and actually somehow figure out a way how the value can be transported earlier? Because I would be happy to put much more people on contribution than we're doing today. You know, but I, I can't. You know, if, if it doesn't pay at the end of the month, it's difficult. Yeah. I mean, this is something that I, uh, in my talks, you know, about diversity and inclusion, this is kind of the same that I always, you know, call our companies uh, because um, they really have to be uh, genuine in, in terms of what they're doing, whether it's supporting open source, diversity, I know it should not just be a, a box ticking exercise where they talk about it, but they don't put their money where their mouth is. Um, so definitely, you, have, you know, we need to call on more companies to actually be doing that. Gracious is just coming back. Sorry, I'm coming. I, I went to close the door because it was noisy. <laughs> no, but we have great, great examples. We have so many companies that are already participating. Like, like Acquia is one of them. And, and there are so many more. And there's also a lot of small companies, like previous Next in, the, in Australia. You know, they have been contributing for so long to the, the project. And, uh, and we can count. Like, you know, we can just look at the list. Yeah, ab absolutely. There's some really great ones like that. There's a few different things that were mentioned in that last kind of question, really. Uh, one of them was around the, the, the more uh, wide variety of roles that we're now finally becoming aware of that needed in open source. And I know that uh, Ariel's got a few thoughts on that. So I don't know if Ariel's got, a, you know, do we have the right people who are actually working in open source projects now? Uh, do we need to always look to increase the 
number of types of contributors, those design, documentation, project management, etc. Can you tell us more about that and what, what you've seen as good practice elsewhere? Yeah, sure. Um, there's one thing that I'd like to add to um, what Badi was saying, though, is um, I was actually having this conversation with a few different people over the last week. One um, ex Red Hat person that runs Life Fest now, and also GitHub last night when they're looking at gathering in information about their sponsors, um, you know, piece of work. And um, companies and individuals, if it's money or contributions, they're always if you're part of like the open source community as a whole and you're kind of the Cody kind of side of things, um, then it typically shakes down that you will contribute either money or time to developer tools related to open source. And I was having these really in-depth conversations with these folks about the fact that non-profit and humanitarian open source exist, but because it's not necessarily a developer tool that, you know, the, the organizations out there that are you know, using the open source developer tools aren't necessarily also using these like open source humanitarian tools. So it's very rare that a humanitarian nonprofit open source, which serves a very unique mission driven and um, helping people around the world purpose, don't get as much in the way of monetary funding or contributions from developers because developers don't tend to use it as much. It's more like individual people that are trying to make change within countries, non nonprofit organizations, people that have no kind of kind of changing interest. So we really struggle in the humanitarian open source side of things because of that kind of sectioning of, of where we are. We're not like a dev tool and, and we find it harder. Um, if that makes sense, I hope it did. Uh, so as far as the other other kind of functions um, do we have the right people? Um, I don't want to like go into Jen's section, which is about kind of different kinds of diversity. I kind of want to just talk about diversity of like role um, and function essentially. And I really don't think that right now I, we have in the open source contributions way we have anything near the right amount of people and anywhere near the right structures and processes in place or even the welcoming environment um, is just about on the pivot point uh, of being like designers are now going to open source <laughs> and speaking at open source or like um, events which is great but you know we've been a function of technology for many many years now and you know we help make things a lot better and usable. We are part of that process. And it's it's very it's always been very strange to me that we haven't been part of the open source process a lot earlier. Um, and things are changing, but again, it's it's kind of you know a slow process in the sense that you know we're doing a lot of um, thought change and. We could, like the open source design community, which you can find at opensourcedesign.net, a lot of what we do in that community all voluntarily is go to open source events and literally just say, hey, we, we exist and we want to help out with your open source, so here's where you can find us and, and put post on our forum what you want design help with, um, because we're there to help and we kind of understand open source and we're interested. Um, and we get less now, um, them right at the beginning, um, but at the beginning, you know, we did get things like when we would go to Fostem or any of the big open source like community gatherings, we would kind of get strange looks and be like, "Well, why are you here?" Like, what? so we're not getting this. Yeah, we're not getting as much of that anymore. So it's still difficult, but it's changing, and it's the same sort of environment for documentation. It's the same. It's actually even worse with things like product management as well. There's not even like that open source product manager is like a community group as far as I know because I often get asked um, by product managers how they can contribute to open source as well um, because of the open source design. But I guess what makes it tricky, and I'll just leave on this note, is that design is not necessarily as simple as raising a single issue or raising like a very kind of restricted fix this thing that can be fixed very clearly with functional code. Design is often a kind of overarching, um, you know, improvement of something. Um, I have a question for you about that. 
uh, very well. So I think like Drupal really needs a lot of good designers uh, to, to start working on the project. And I actually, you know, I'm wondering how can we, and this goes back to the point like, you know, you have to make a living at the end of the day, and we still need you to like focus on um, the topic. You need to create the, the, the design system that you want to have. So what, what would be a way for us to get like a lot of designers to come and contribute to Drupal, but at the same time, not burn you out and let you work for free, but instead like figuring out a way to give you credits for it? Um, I won't take too much time on this. There's a lot of stuff there to respond to. Um, what I will say is that there are things being done to try and solve that problem, um, or the many problems that are, that are within that. Um, I think that, I mean, at the Open Source Africa Festival that me, Jen, and uh, Rachel were at, um, one of the things that they were creating is not only a community around open source design there specifically, um, through support from tools like Figma, which are obviously not open source, but they're still supporting open ways-ish um, of sharing. Um, and also the bounties like on open, open source issues. Like they don't want that to just be coding with it. They want to open those up to design. Um, there's other organizations that have had this conversation with me and other open source design folks about how we um, make involvement from designers um, supported. And I guess one of the most interesting things to look back on is the way that Mozilla did their last branding change. And they did it, they tried to do open design, open source design with their brand project. And they came across a lot of really tricky problems. And it's to do with the fact that the design side of things is so new that we don't have things like processes, version control, ways of critiquing each other within files. Um, only new, now we we'll are be seeing that happen in our kind of proprietary software. Um, and we're just not really used to it. So it is a slow process. So you won't find a big amount of designers yet to contribute, but you will find enough. And I think the key thing is to build those technical processes alongside the community side of things. So a lot of designers coming in wanting to contribute for the first time on things like Drupal or City CRM and all these kinds of different things. Um, what they also need is a supportive community that when they make that kind of contribution that they can kind of look to their community um, for the, what would essentially be like a pull request you know, approval or comments system so that they know that they're doing good design work or, you know, that solves the problem. So yeah, tricky, a tricky question. We'll, we'll talk in depth at some point about Oh, I think like we should do a, we should do a whole panel about just that. <laughs> yes, I think that would be a really good idea. I think, I think there's, a, there's also this process question of most, most people who came to open source, they had a personal itch to scratch and they worked on that area and they resolved it and they, and they, oh, they usually pick an area that they can resolve themselves, and then they 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 continue to be involved if they were successful. And you need to grow those people into 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 people that have more of a more of a wide picture of what needs to be done, not just like I need to move this button from here to there and then I'm done, but more of a systemic thinking of okay, and I need a designer for this and I need a project manager to figure out. Which what, what things gets done where, and if you can grow those people from the individual contributors that they were, then they could have this street cred in the community from they are capable of contributing, and they would also have the the, the higher level picture. What we've had 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 uh, challenges making happen is to get project managers and product managers uh, all new into the open source world. We did not have this food cred and, and try to involve them, uh, that was hard. Um, it would be great if we would find a way to make that happen because it would be a very valuable way to get more people involved, but we could not yet crack that code, unfortunately. Well, I wonder, because Sergio was mentioning before about all the money or all the efforts going inside this cycle of uh, you get the money from development and you go back to development, right? I wonder if trying to spread the money through all their areas. It will help one that problem of you know trying to to help on that, but also trying to get the community to be more diverse, trying to help other people in 
coming to to the Rupa now in the open source in the area, right? Yeah, and if I can say like something, I think the biggest threat to open source projects is the design. The lack of design. The lack, That's yes. The lack of design. And this is really my, my personal uh, opinion that I have. I, so we see so many great projects out there, but they just can't do the design part well because they are missing, because they're really good at coding and they're really good technically. And they are normally actually the, much better than any of the proprietary products out there. Um, but this is actually like if, if I have any worries about the future of open source, it is the lack of uh, good UX and design in these projects because they're the product companies. If you think about Slack, you know it's just it's just flawless from the how we use it. Uh, and that's why we all like it and love it. And we also have other open source projects that are as good, but this is not the same. So. We need to, as a Drupal community, in my opinion, if we talk about Drupal and this Drupal camp, you know, we, we need to focus on this as a community. So therefore, like, I think that this conversation needs to continue for the next months, and we need to do it fast, because there we need to improve. So do you think we should put a panel in for DrupalCon in Barcelona? Please. Yeah? <laughs> At least. <laughs> I, I can't promise an event before then. I'm just going to pause at that moment and see if anybody from the audience has got any questions uh, related to what we've talked about so far. Because I don't want you to feel left out. You're part of this. No, not at the moment. Okay. Well, we'll I think we'll move on at that point, if that's okay with everyone. Because we, it's we've had some good conversations. Uh, but I just want to jump on to Jen, who I, I, I really. I know you've got a lot of expertise and experience with looking at uh, a more diverse range of people as well as diverse roles. So I'd like to hear, how does it actually help open source to actually look wider than just the people that we may have had in the past? Um, well, okay, in general, we obviously want to attract more people into open source because uh, if we just, you know, someone was saying earlier, a guy is you know, maintaining so many different things on its own. Um, and what if that person actually gets hit by a bus one, one day? You know, it's, that, it's that, that will cause a lot of uh, problems, right? Uh, and I know some of the uh, maintainers, uh, lead maintainers who are in that situation. Um, so in general, yeah, we want to attract you know more people uh, contributing, but we also want to make sure that the you know the uh, the people that we're engaging are diverse because um, there's been a lot of studies where any project you know benefits from having a more diverse and inclusive um, profile uh, in companies where it's a commercial you know venture. It's been proven that you know the, the bottom line definitely benefits from you know from that. And any, in my view, any project will benefit from having that, you know, diverse and inclusive point of view. Um, so um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 there's a lot of work that needs to be done, not just from, uh, not just on getting more people uh, involved, but also getting it, uh, you know, more diverse benefits right now. And I'm actually very happy with what we saw that Rachel, uh, yeah. Errol, and I saw in Africa. Because there's uh, there's a really booming uh, you know uh, community of open source uh, contributors there, uh, and I think we should encourage that in any region, in every yeah. region. I think the, really thing, the thing that I saw there that really struck me was we were talking to a room of hundreds of uh, people interested in open source, and they were young. I mean, they were like they were young. really yeah, young. <laughs> in fact, I did a, a type of type thing when I was speaking and there were a significant number of people there that were younger than Drupal, yeah? You know, they were, they, they were like 19 years old, and I don't want to make Dries feel old, but, you know, these people were doing open source. It was incredible. And they're very, very passionate about it as well. Oh, my That's God, they're passionate, yeah. yeah. And I think we need to encourage that. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, as far as open source Africa, I mean, I love the Open Source Africa Festival, absolutely amazing, like Jen said. It was like one of the most energizing places I think I've been around an open source community. Um, not to kind of, you know, say that other communities aren't energetic, but I think that there's something about that quality of, of um, new 
uh, ideas that can come from different places that haven't had the opportunities before. And I found the same thing uh, when I was in Taiwan last year for the Open Up uh, Global Summit Festival, which is the first first one of that event, um, bringing together the whole of Southeast Asia around openness in general. So not just development topics, but how to work openly with governments and design and um, you know any data and how to work with data openly as well. Um, and then the same, I can I can say the same of um, the community within India as well. Because um, again, I, I went to an event last year where I just saw the community within India, the energeticness around specifically humanitarian topics and how, you, how we can improve the world using open source as well. Like the energy there is great, and why why aren't we making space for I just space for these things? Like it's a no-brainer to me, but maybe not. Yeah, it's interesting <laughs> that you talk about India because actually, if you look at the uh, contribution view in, in Cuba. And I'm sorry, I'm just talking about the globe, but this, that's the world I know, right? But in the last years, you see a lot of effort from these guys, from people from, from India, right? And I, yeah, it makes me think about that. Uh, maybe the efforts of making sure that Drupal is an open source is sustainable is trying to go to the, the diversification of the, of the communities. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, three minutes. I've only got three minutes left. I've got one question. I just did want to check if Badi had anything she wanted to add about businesses. Because uh, Badi, being a business owner, um, she mentions some sort of things that businesses should be doing uh, and considering and making possible. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add in that in the last few minutes, Badi? Yeah, I just want to encourage, so the only thing, there is value that comes from contribution. So, and that has been proven, and and we are trying to constantly talk about the value that we get. And it maybe it's not directly in money, you know, but their value is like, there is a better chance, like, to find people, find good people. If you are contributing to a, pro to a project, it's more likely that you're going to get good people that actually are interested in that, because they know that they will be able to contribute when they work for you. You know, you get a lot of visibility and you get like this expertise stamp on you as a company. So a company that contributes, they actually get chosen to work on projects that are maybe more complicated and, and so on. So like I, you know, if anybody is listening to this or watching this afterwards and you own a business and you're not contributing yet, like there is value, we still need to figure out how we can do that even more. So, so we can actually put more people because the talent is there. And, uh, and I would love to have more talent in my company that would contribute, but I, I have, it still has to be balanced. So we could also maybe figure out a way how we can give these companies that are already contributing even more, you know, more, more visibility in our global community. Yeah, yeah, keeping that visibility up, I mean, there is such a thing as the Contribution Recognition Committee that are working at the moment, and one of the things that they need to be considering are how they can boost up and make visible those organisations who really are committing effort. It, it makes a big difference. Uh, I'm very much in favour of that. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, we've got a question. That's good, from the audience. Thank you so much. Just a not question, just a mark maybe. A uh, couple of years ago, years ago, there was a hype about the knowledge management. Uh, <laughs> there were many, many conferences about this type of uh, topic, but it was not related to open source, it was related to internal knowledge sharing uh, company, something. Maybe we can use uh, this kind of uh, uh, knowledge. Knowledge, uh, yeah. There's, for example, many, many motivation techniques uh, when, when we talk about how can we motiv motivate the people uh, to uh, put any new idea to check that knowledge. Yeah. Uh, and uh, 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 it can help for the management as well. Uh, so, uh, to present what uh, uh, the value of the knowledge sharing or uh, the open source uh, development, development for open source techniques. Uh, so, I don't know, just. Yeah, just, I'm trying to think how to summarize that now for the microphone, and I'm not even sure. <laughs> Do, how would you. 
you want to come down here and, and summarise it into the microphone just for, just for one minute? And then <laughs> there was quite a lot of information there. We've got four percent battery yeah. left on this laptop, so, you, so we will be wrapping speak, up. Speak here. Yeah. Yeah. Just very quickly, just speak. <laughs> Sorry, it's my first. Uh, Mr. Basho, just uh, many years ago there was a hype uh, uh, in the uh, IP area, uh, or maybe not IP, it's uh, uh, management as well. So uh, that, uh, I know, there were many, many uh, confidences about the knowledge management. But it's not, uh, it was not related to open source, it was related to how can we share any information or any knowledge inside the company. So for example, there is a huge company, and uh, there are many, many departments, and they, uh, one department uh, didn't know that the other department uh, has a kind of knowledge or information or something. And uh, what, how can we improve uh, the knowledge sharing inside the company? It was the main So how do you spread that, spread it, thank put you. that on the wider yeah. open format? Yeah, yes. exactly. And uh, maybe it can help, uh, because there were many, many uh, return, for example, return on investment uh, uh, measurement. Uh, uh, how, what, what is the value if you, sh you can share your knowledge yeah. uh, 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 in company or uh, somewhere. And uh, uh, maybe uh, we can use that kind of uh, uh, disciplines or the kind of theories or things, I know, uh, for the uh, open source, in the open source world, because uh, it can help, <laughs> again, yeah. uh, to, pr pr uh, to present the value. Brilliant. Of the open source. Uh, Thank I you. Yeah, come. yeah, brilliant. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay, well, thank you everyone for coming along. I, I kind of expected to have more time for more questions, but everyone's done a really good job of talking. And I'd like to right, thank so our panel. We still have 30 minutes, right? We no, 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 no. <laughs> We're finished. <laughs> We're over by three minutes now. We're over time, <laughs> and I'm in trouble already. People holding signs up at me. So. Thank you to our panel, thank you to Buddy, thank you to Jen, thank you to Gabor, thank you to Alex, thank you to Ariel, uh, I think that's everyone. So, I hope you go back, go wash your hands, and uh, <laughs> I will speak to you all later, thank you. <laughs>